Hello, in this video we'll be covering the file system entry source as found under the sources section of the toolbox. The file system entry source provides metadata information about files found in a particular folder. For example, uh, in a certain folder on my system I have four files uh, and I and the file system entry source gives me certain metadata about the uh, each file. So for example I can get the file name, the file name without extension, the extension of the file, the full path of the file, the directory the path uh, of the file that is contained in, uh, whether or not the file is read only, the size and bytes of the file, when it was last accessed, when it was last modified, and the hidden and system attributes as well. To configure the uh, file system entries, I can right click and select properties, and that'll bring open the properties dialog screen. The first thing you'll notice is the path uh, to the directory that you want to uh, read from. To change the directory or select a directory, click on the icon of a folder icon here, which will bring open the browse for folder dialog. Here, navigate to the folder which you wish to uh, basically read from and click OK. Uh, and then once you have this, that's all pretty much all you need in order to start using this component. You can also make use of the filter, uh, uh, the filter text box here, which will filter uh, basically down to a subset of files based on uh, a match, uh, basically a match that you provide here. So for example, uh, in my original example I have four files. Uh, let me go ahead and go back to that and preview. You can see where I have four files, uh, three text files and one uh, DOC file. I can make use of the filter to filter out uh, all except the text file. So notice the wildcard here, uh, star.txt. I'm basically going to say use for anything that uh, ends in a .txt file, go ahead and use uh, read that file and provide me the metadata information about that file. So now I've reduced my data set to only three uh, entries and all with a .txt file. The last uh, item in the properties for this is the include items and subdirectories. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. If I leave this unchecked, I'm only going to read the immediate files uh, under the COBOL or the directory that I picked in this case. Uh, if I check this, I will read all files found even in directories further down uh, from my uh, main picked directory in this case. Now the file system entry source, uh, again, I can act as a driver for a data flow and you can do anything you want with this data set, but where it is really valuable is in a workflow. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and create a new workflow. Uh, and in this workflow, I'm going to drag and drop the file system entry source and choose my directory. So I'm going to go ahead and paste a directory that I've already copied here. Click OK. And the first thing you'll notice, though, is that the background of the layout here is yellow. And what that, that is telling me is that this uh, is a singleton. And by default, all sources in a workflow are singletons. So if I try and preview the data at this point, uh, I will get this error message, uh, preview action does not depend on any non-singleton data source. To start using this in the capacity that makes sense for, uh, in most cases, uh, for most usage scenarios of this component, you're going to want to turn this into an iterator. Changing this to an iterator will do a couple of things. It'll turn this box purple, uh, which indicates that it is a loop component, so I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that you'll have these little uh, horns at the top of the uh, of the box here, which indicate that it is uh, allowed to be take place in a control flow. Uh, so you can hook this up into other actions. Uh, so at this point, I can now preview my file system entries here, and you can see that I have four files in the directory that I specified. Uh, and now I can use this information. Uh, in a loop in my workflow. So what you most likely are going to use this file system entries in conjunction with is either another workflow or a data flow. 
So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate an example of this in conjunction with a data flow. So I'm going to go into workflow task and select the run data flow uh, t workflow task and configure this to pick a specific workflow task that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and actually not that one, this one and look for my reusable flow here and click next and here you see that I have my parameters uh, that I have for this particular data flow including a source file and a destination file. Uh, what I want to do is I want to run this particular data flow uh, and here you can see where I have my delimited source file here and I want to change the source file depending on whatever file I'm reading from the a particular folder. To do that, I'm going to make use of the, the parameters in Centerprise, select everything, and use the parameter syntax. So I'm going to say dollar file system one because that's the name of my action that I'm going to read from, and then dot full path because the full path contains the path that I'm going to replace uh, with the original uh, source file path with. So now I'm going to click OK and connect this file system 1 to the subsequent run data flow 1. So here you'll notice the double line in the workflow. This uh, indicates that this is a looped component, which means that for every single record that I read here from my uh, data source, I'm going to go ahead and run the subsequent action n number of times. Since it's that, so since I have four records here, I'm going to have I'm going to run this subsequent run data flow four times. So if I go ahead and click this run, you can see that uh, in the progress of the run data flow, I've actually run this data flow uh, four separate times. So this is how you use the file system entry source uh, in Centerprise.